What's going on guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I really am your friend. And I wanna let you know, you have to keep your positive mindset. Keep your positive mindset no matter what. I know it's hard, man. I know it's difficult sometimes to stay focused, to stay positive, but look, dude, like we're gonna get through this situation, we're gonna get this time in our lives, and we're gonna get better. I always say it, but I want you to know that. I want you to remember that. Stay positive, okay? So I'm really excited about this video today. You know, we've seen Fortnite have two Battle Royale islands um, to drop onto, right? I mean, both of them have had, you know, major changes since, since it was first introduced. And new points of interest and, you know, drop locations have been added, you know, and taken away. Some have been great and some of them have been awful. In today's video, we're gonna be going over seven drop locations that were incredible. And three of them that should have never been made. Enjoy. All right, guys, it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen around the world, help me and Smokey scream this out. It's time to sit back, come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. Come on, Smokey, say it, come on, bark it, something. He's not interested right now. It's that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. Woo. Season one of Fortnite's second chapter lasted for what felt like forever. <laughs> And everyone knew that Epic Games needed to add something game-changing to Season 2 to really generate some fresh interest to the game. The biggest change to the Battle Royale Island had to be the agency, which took the place of the island from Season 1. This new point of interest was so interesting and cool, not only because it was located at the direct center of the map, but because, you know, it offered us a brand new boss fight and other PvE mechanics. Agents of Ghosts would patrol the area and open fire on any players. Certain locations would be guarded by, you know, sentry turrets that would also fire on you or cameras that would alert nearby ghost henchmen of your location. So the coolest thing of all, you know, was Midas himself. While Midas is the Chapter 2, Season 2, you know, level 100 Battle Pass reward, he is also a boss that shows up in the agency. The Golden Man is tough to take down. He can take a lot of bullets, but you do get some great loot and access to the nearby vault for your troubles. All in all, you know, when Chapter 2, Season 2 began, this was probably the coolest location on the entire map. Lockie's Lighthouse is probably one of the worst additions to not just the Season 2 Fortnite map, but one of the worst location additions to Fortnite in general. Can we be honest? Not only is this map like far too out of the way to be useful, I mean, my goodness, it's all the way up at Grid Reference C1. It's a tiny location with absolutely nothing interesting nearby. Going to the lighthouse is a serious waste of time. <laughs> the lighthouse itself is a giant spiral staircase that leads to very little loot, meaning you have to visit the nearby museum that also only has a couple of chests located inside of that. So after you've collected the meager amount of loot in the area, all right, you're faced with what is likely to be a cross map journey to get yourself into the action, which is never a fun experience. The only cool thing about this location is the Dusty Depot picture in the area's museum, and that isn't really worth the effort to go there. There was a time when there was no story in Fortnite. You know, when all we cared about was learning the basics of building and then just trying to get the Victor Royale. These days, the storyline is like deep and it's continuing to evolve. And it all started when Dusty Diva was formed. So when we booted up season three for the first time and we saw Dusty Depot wiped away in a crater, it was like one of the coolest moments in the history of Fortnite and really marked the beginning of Fortnite storyline. The area would change a lot in the coming years, you know, with the military base at the center becoming overrun with trees as the world began to heal from the colossal meteor impact. Eventually, a diner would even be built at the site, commemorating the impact by repurposing the leftover husk of Dusky Depot. It was an area on the map that was the heart of the chapter one storyline, you know, constantly changing. And for that, it more than deserves to be called one of the best locations in the game. So the Fortnite Chapter 2 map has many more city and like town style locations than the original Chapter 1 map. But one of the more interesting of these towns and cities has to be the sleepy seaside town of Sweaty Sands. So filled with a mixture of tall buildings, open beach fronts, you know, a pier, looks really nice, want a vacation there, and clustered smaller buildings, this area complements pretty much any play style that you can just think of. There's plenty to loot to go around, and a fair few, you know, people drop here every game if you're looking to pick up some early eliminations, which is also a lot of fun, personally. <laughs> you know, there's even more chests and loot buried in the sands of the beach, if you know where to look. 
Sweaty Sands offers, you know, a truly colossal 34 chests in total, which means there's more than enough top tier loot to go around. All right, guys, so by all means, Pleasant Park should be a great location to drop. Like, it's been around since Chapter 1, Season 1, and it's even survived the crazy events of Season X to stick around throughout Chapter 2. The fact of the matter is this, though. Like, this point of interest should be avoided at all cost. I mean, it just sucks. Okay, so this suburban town always has at least a few teams drop down onto the location, which would be fine if it weren't, like, for all the wide open spaces and the way the loot is distributed throughout all the different buildings. You can't even really loot without being pushed by another team, and since you're in the early game with no mats and probably stuck out in the open, chances are uh, you're going to be an easy target and your game is about to be over fast. So if you do somehow manage to get out of your building and manage to take a break for it, you know, there isn't really anywhere nearby that you can disappear to and just hide. The escape routes from this location are simply lacking. And even if you manage to win the area, I mean, it's not like, you know, you're gonna have many places to rotate. Pleasant sucked in chapter one, and I'm sorry, it still sucks right now in chapter two. Okay, so in a time with Tilted Towers still ruled as the best drop location on the chapter one map, Epic Games really wanted to shake up the Fortnite meta. Oh! Oh my god! Oh! Oh my god! Oh my god! Tilted had been dominating drops for like far too long, and so they wanted to add another city style location that could hopefully spread out where people dropped. Paradise Palms was that they hoped to be the answer. Okay, so added in season five, this wide desert cityscape was located in the southeast location of the map, replacing what had previously been Moisty Mire. It was a tropical paradise city designed to be an oasis in the middle of the desert. There were 22 loot chests located in Paradise Palms, you know, making it, you know, one of the most loot filled areas of the map, which is probably why it ended up enticing so many people when it was first added to the game. So, did it manage to take away the popularity crown from Tilted Towers? Hmm, probably not, but it did serve its purpose, you know, as an awesome second city location that people could drop to if they wanted a bit of, you know, early game action and guaranteed loot. One of the coolest locations to ever be added to Fortnite Battle Royale has gotta be the floating Loot Lake Island. Anybody agree? It was never again an actual point of interest name, but it definitely deserves to be on a list of awesome drop locations. This area was caused by the ending of season five, when the giant purple cube became absorbed into Loot Lake. Before then, reforming on the bottom of the island and then just causing it to fly up in the air. It was probably one of the most unique areas that we've ever seen in Fortnite. The flying island had a whirlwind surrounding it that allowed players to fly around and redeploy their gliders to either reposition to new places on the island or just fly off to other parts of the map. The island didn't really stay over Loot Lake either. It flew around the whole Fortnite island until it was eventually destroyed as part of the butterfly event. We did get to see this island one last time when it was brought back to the world of Fortnite by a rift beacon, though this time it stayed stationary near Fatal Fields. Okay, so if we've learned anything from today's video, it should be that because an area has been in both Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 of Fortnite, that doesn't necessarily mean that the location is any good. Another clear example of that is Salty Springs, which is probably named that way because of just how salty landing there is going to make you when you do. Or is that just me? Whatever. You would expect any area like Salty just to be spread out with loot, considering how many people end up dropping there, right? But the simple fact of the matter is this, loot is surprisingly hard to come by here. Okay, so if you're a less confident player who has dropped into Salty Springs in Chapter 2, then you're going to be in for a terrible shock, my friends. People who drop here are usually itching for a fight and are mostly incredibly aggressive WK players. That means they're going to hunt you down and keep pushing on the fight no matter what you do and how you disengage. They're going to follow you until they get you. That's just how it is. Because of that, if you drop at Salty, you're almost definitely going to get third party. Like, yeah, it's just going to happen. And uh, if you don't, it's not like there's anywhere else to rotate anyway. So when it comes to Fortnite Chapter 2, there is one location that I think everybody would agree on being the best location on the map. Can I get a drum roll? It might not have reached, you know, the legendary status of Chapter 1's Tilted Towers, but the Slurpy Swamp and nearby Slurp Factory have got to be the single best drop spots of Chapter 2, located inside of both C6 and C7 on the maps. This large map has the unique ability of being able to give you health and shields just by standing in certain locations. 
The slurp factory is leaking slurp juices, and while this would be an eschological disaster if it really happened in the real world, these patches of blue goo can actually heal you and give you shields if you just stand in them. There are also barrels and trucks of slurp juice that, if you really harvest them, will give you shields when you break them. The main factory in this area has numerous buildings, and it looks like it may have been based on Flush Factory. There may be only 14 chest spawns in this area, but the easily available shields and central location of the point of interest more than make up for the average amounts of loot offered. Okay guys, so we can't make a video on incredible drop locations without mentioning the legendary, incredible, fan favorite, Tilted Towers. I'm pumped up. Okay, so when Tilted was first added to the map, it was a truly unique location, right? It was fairly central, located between Loot Lake and Shifty Shafts, and was the very first location in Fortnite to ever include high-rise buildings. Wasn't that fun? The area was released as part of Patch 2 and was immediately controversial. Never before had there been an area with so much loot condensed into such a small area and it just drew people to the location in numbers that had never really been seen in locations across the island. People started to complain, claiming Epic had made the game to focus on the single location. It was a battle Epic would fight, you know, in basically every season until Chapter 2. But while people have complained about Tilted Towers at first, it wasn't long before Fortnite fans began to love the area. I mean, it really became legendary, especially for, you know, Battleground and early eliminations, you know, one that no other area would be able to do. At the end of Season 8, the Tilted we knew and loved was destroyed by the erupting volcano event. Though was regenerated in the form of Neil Tilted in the very next season, the new version of Tilted was cool in its own ways, but let's be real, it was never quite managed to capture our hearts like the classic original. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you guys. Hope you guys were inspired by this video because, uh, you know, it was a fun video to make. Now you know the best places to drop. Keep going, man. Never, ever stop fighting. Never, ever stop believing. That was our video on the seven Fortnite drop locations that were incredible and the three that really never should have existed. <laughs> if you want to see more awesome Pro Guys content just like this, then don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that all-important bell to be notified for future videos. We'll see you soon. Peace.